focal nodular hyperplasia is the second most common benign liver lesion. It typically occurs in women in the third to fifth decades of life, and it is due to a hyperplastic response of the liver to congenital arteriovenous malformation. On imaging, we see an unencapsulated mass with a central stellate scar. And we may also see a central feeding artery with a spoke wheel pattern. And if we see this, we can be pretty confident that it's a focal nodular hypoplasia. Here's an example of a focal nodular hypoplasia in which we see a fairly homogeneously enhancing mass in the liver with the exception of the central scar. It is unencapsulated. And then on the venous phase, the mass becomes isodense relative to the background liver. And here it is on the coronal. You can appreciate the same kind of imaging characteristics. Pretty homogeneous enhancement with the exception of the central scar. And we can use the 3D images to also accentuate the conspicuity of the mass relative to the background liver. And also on the MIPS, we can really nicely look at the feeding vessels of how the vessel really on this cinematic rendering images, we can see how the central feeding vessel really goes to the middle of the lesion. And then we can appreciate some fine feeding arteries in a spoke wheel pattern, like a bike that goes all, all to the periphery. <clears throat> so on the focal nodular hypoplasia, because we typically, it becomes isodense to the background liver on the venous phase. If venous phase images is all you have, you can actually easily walk by the lesion. So this is a fairly sizable mass in the right hepatic lobe. And if you're scrolling very quickly, you can easily miss it because it's really high, really isodense relative to the background liver. But we can appreciate that there's a central scar and we can also appreciate that there's the displacement of the vessels all around the periphery. So when we see that vessels are peripherally gently pushed and draped on the periphery, that is a more benign feature, as opposed to something that's rapidly growing, they would invade the vessels rather than gently pushing the vessels away. So this is also a good appearance for focal nodular hypoplasia. Focal nodular hypoplasia and hepatocellular adenomas are frequently confused because they may have similar imaging appearances. Adenoma is a benign hepatic tumor that commonly occurs in women on oral contraceptives. And it can be further characterized on specific genetic and pathologic features into inflammatory adenoma, HNF1 alpha mutated adenoma, and beta catenin mutated adenoma. The inflammatory subtype is the most common, and we see them mostly in women, women on OCPUs, and obese patients. It has the highest chance of bleeding. And on imaging, we expect to see intense arterial enhancement with persistent enhancement on venous and delayed phases. The HNF1 alpha mutator type is the second most common, and we may expect to see multiple adenomas. We also commonly usually see it only in women and associated with OCP use. We may also see background hepatic steatosis <clears throat> and also the the lesion itself may exhibit diffuse intratumoral steatosis, and these features can help distinguish the HNF1, HNF1 alpha mutated type from the other types of adenomas. We see moderate arterial enhancement, and these are less likely to show persistent enhancement on venous and delayed phases. The beta catenin mutated type is more common in men, patients on male hormone and administration and glycogen storage disease. The clinical importance of the beta catena mutated type is that it has a higher incidence of HCC. And we see strong arterial enhancement that may or may not persist on venous and delayed phase images. Here is an example of a hepatocellular adenoma. So even on the arterial phase, you can appreciate that the enhancement pattern is more heterogeneous compared to the focal nodular hyperplasia I have shown. 
And I think that's a good feature in distinguishing these larger adenomas from FNHs. On the arterial phase, on the cinematic, you can appreciate that heterogeneous enhancement pattern that becomes more homogeneous on the venous phase. And here is an example where we have multiple adenomas and background steatosis. So when you look on the arterial phase, there are multiple enhancing nodules throughout the liver. Since the background liver is steatotic but doesn't look cirrhotic, adenomas would be a very good choice. And adenomas, as I mentioned on that previous slide, can be multiple. So this is a, would be a very good diagnosis for, for this type of imaging appearance. And on venous phase, we're, uh, we're seeing persistent enhancement of these nodules. And on the cinematic rendered image, when we render the background liver translucent, we can appreciate the sheer number of enhancing foci that are throughout the liver. Another helpful feature for diagnosing anoma is the enhancing pseudocapsule. So here on the venous phase, we can appreciate that there's an enhancing capsule along the periphery of the lesion. When I mentioned about FNH on the previous slide, I emphasized that it, that it is an unencapsulated lesion. So if we see an enhancing capsule or pseudocapsule on the venous phase, adenoma would be a good choice. And so is HCC as we will get to it. And the presence of fat is also a helpful marker for adenoma. So on the top row, I have in-phase and out-of-phase images demonstrating there is signal loss within this lesion on the outer phase, indicating the presence of fat. On the bottom row, I have arterial phase and venous phase. So we have an arterial enhancing lesion with a little bit of washout. So a fat containing lesion is very helpful in narrowing the differential into adenoma and HCC. And adenomas can also bleed. So this is a case where you have a very ill-defined mass within the right hepatic lobe with foci of active contrast extravasation and a big hematoma and also hemoperitoneum. So when we see a big bleeding mass, also the, the top of the differential would be an adenoma or HCC. In terms of management of hepatocellular adenoma, we need to identify any known cause, such as OCPs or steroids from the history, withhold the medication and repeat imaging in three to six months. Stable or regressing adenomas may be monitored with imaging studies, and adenomas larger than five centimeters should be resected due to the risk of bleeding. Radiofrequency ablation and hepatic artery embolization are additional therapeutic options besides surgery.